thank you, Reed, for taking the time and joining me on the show today. It's great to have you on. Uh, I've been looking forward to uh, speaking with a lot of folks who are big on BitCloud, and you're certainly one of the big guys there, one of the top 10 creators. Previously had Jake Udell on the show, um, so, so excited for this conversation as well. Um, but you're not just about BitCloud. You're, you're excited about the broader social token movement. Uh, you're an, an angel investor more broadly uh, into a lot of crypto applications. So uh, great to have you on. I think the best place to start would be for those who uh, are not familiar with you and, and your story, just to sort of introduce yourself and, um, you know, as early as you're willing to start and, and sort of telling your story from how you got to where you started to, to where you are today. Um, that'd be great. And we can sort of dive in from there. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I'm basically, yeah, it's been an interesting journey. Um, when I was, I would say in high school, I'd say my identity was pretty much lost. Personally, school wasn't like the right place for me. I struggled a lot with, you know, the routine. And I just felt like there were other opportunities where I was getting more, um, I was just getting more out of working in the general world. So when I was 16, I actually dropped out of high school and started a I would say startup that helped small businesses connect with um, entrepreneurs who were looking to hire them. Um, And it was more like an Angie's list for, for, for business services. So um, the idea was that if you were a startup and you needed a lawyer an accountant, you could use the whole ecosystem throughout the U S rather than paying like a super expensive rate uh, in the New York city area, but could get someone in Iowa for like a quarter of the price. And it turned out to be like super, just a super interesting experience. I raised some money, but I learned a lot along the way. Um, I ended up giving a lot of equity away to a lot of investors because I was 16 at the time. So I understood the risk, but that's really where all of this started for me was the idea where I wanted to help people expand their monetization opportunities. Um, The business didn't work out. Uh, It just, the partnership structure was just, it just wasn't worth it for me. Um, But I never ended up going to college after that because I just found myself to be in an element where I just had the entrepreneurial spirit. So down the line, I, you know, the crypto scene was starting to heat up. My dad got super into Ethereum It was like an entire new language for me. And as the price kept going up, he kept texting me like $7, $7.50, $7.75. And I just realized like this was interesting. And I tried to learn about it, but I couldn't learn anything about it. So he started setting me up with some really cool people for lunch, for dinner. And I just slowly started to get the hang of it. And for me, it was Ethereum, not Bitcoin because of smart contracts. And I realized that smart contracts were going to help people get their fair share um, and their fair share, whether it was exposure, um, as we're seeing now with social tokens and manipulated algorithms on social media networks, or simply just payments, right? Commissions, distributions, um, any sort of contract where, you know, there is a middleman and there could be a lot of discrepancies and fraud involved. And I felt felt like in that moment, I realized that the future was about to change on the payment side. And as the crypto, the first crypto bull run in 2017 started to take off, um, that's when I kind of dropped everything and was like, I want to be a part of this. Um, And now, today, I've been investing in a lot of different crypto projects, a lot of funds. um, And I just, to be honest, I'm super bullish on the entire ecosystem, but social tokens specifically. And I feel like it's like super early and I like being super early. In this case, um, the best part about social, the best part about the future with social tokens is the idea that all you have to do is talk to them about the numbers that they're putting out, they're bringing in on other networks today versus what they can bring in on the crypto market in the future. And when you just start putting numbers side by side, the, the, it's just an incredible transformation of the system that we had and currently have today to what we will have in the future. And it's gonna create a lot of opportunities for 
just general talent. And I think the biggest flaw today is that there's just plenty of companies that own too much of everybody's individual talent. And the idea that, you know, I could just find talent and it's tokenized and could, as they succeed, I could succeed. Um, I, I think that, that there's like some sort of clout to that, right? Uh, we see it with TikTok where, you know, there's these TikTok stars that were just kind of discovered. How cool would it be to be one of like Charlie D'Amelio's, you know, first 10,000 followers? Um, you know, you had the, the knowledge to discover that talent and then see her become super successful today and monetize off platform and on platform to the point where she's now a world star, world famous celebrity. Um, and the idea that you could grow with others on the blockchain in a decentralized manner, I feel is the way that new talent will be sought out. All right. Yeah, that, that's a great story. Let, let's get right into it. I, I want to, uh, you know, touch back on a couple of, of the early moments of, of sort of your, your growth, because I think it's really interesting and, and a very unique path. But I want to pick off right where you ended, which is, you know, on, on social tokens, broadly speaking, you talked about how um, you know, one of the things that you like to do is talk with the creator about, okay, what are you making on platform X, platform Y, whether it's TikTok or YouTube or whatever it might be, and look at what you can potentially make in, you know, on, on this platform, on this crypto platform using these social tokens, whether it's BitCloud or potentially something else. Um, what do you think is sort of the, uh, from your perspective, the, the nature of like the Delta there, the difference between what creators can make on existing platforms versus what social tokens and decentralized social media, you know, the opportunities that they can create. Why is there such a difference there fr from your perspective, what you're seeing in these very early days? There's a lot. Um, so the first thing is manipulated algorithms. So if you put yourself in their shoes, you see all these people that are coming to them and wanting to get access to them. But the only access they have is through whatever they put out on, let's just use Instagram for an example. It's probably the easiest to monetize today. And what happens is, is that Instagram actually has full control of your revenue model, right? They could display you on their featured page, which gives you more exposure. They could take down your posts. They could shadow it so that, you know, it's not really seen to your followers since they've changed a lot of their algorithms of how posts are now displayed on their feed. So now it's like you're at a point where you can only go so far up until the point that Platform X says, okay, it, we're gonna make it really tough for you because we have new people coming onto our platforms that we wanna expose since we've already exposed you and you have a matured following. Um, and that's a serious problem specifically with a lot of Instagram accounts that are at the around like 1 million follower mark to like the 10. Cause I think that at, there's a huge difference between a large Instagram account and a very large Instagram account. And the very large ones will always be relevant just because they're very famous people. But then there are like those creators that are in just like the couple million homegrown influencers that just cannot monetize anymore because they're not giving Instagram any ad revenue. They're just people on there. And there are other opportunities for Instagram to expose new talent. And so they kind of get shadowed out. Um, the next thing is how these deals work, these brand deals. That's something that I've kind of learned about the last few, uh, I would say months since BitCloud began. Um, they're never in the creator's best interest, right? So if you're talking about like a fashion brand that will take you on a bunch of trips, right? these influencers aren't actually really being paid a fair amount of money per follower they're exposing uh, the content to. They're actually just, you know, hopping on this really cool trip, getting tons of content, which is brilliant marketing on the brand side. But at the end of the day, that's what this market has turned into. So there's really no way to scale above that unless you're just in that, you know, super famous 30 million, 20 million plus uh, follower range because you're kind of just swooped right in and you're not just, again, being fairly compensated price per followers uh, wise. And we could talk a little bit later too about that metric, because I think that that's going to be one of the new metrics that are going to be really important for growing your brand, which is the amount of money you're making per follower that you have annually. 
Um, and so it's just kind of like how these deals have been, how advertising deals have been structured the last few years um, on these other platforms that have really just kind of changed the overall market for, adver- for, for, for deals with influencers. Um, with BitCloud, I think it's super interesting because you actually have total control on, on in de- with the entire, with decentralization. And that's good for a number of reasons, right? So one, you get transparency. So you could actually see the real numbers of who's looking at your page, what kind of followers you have, what kind of traffic that following is bringing to you, and then get actually like a fair market value by looking at other comps and other accounts and actually seeing how much money they're bringing in. And then there's the diamonds component, obviously, too, which we could talk about later. But there's a plethora of opportunities on BitCloud where you actually get full transparency and be able to actually maintain your relevance, which on Instagram, they have complete control over. Um, And I could speak for that too. Like for me, I'm not on Instagram. Uh, I have a Twitter account, which I use strictly for news because um, I lock it up. So like there, I don't let people follow me and I just follow a bunch of accounts that I, you know, have interest in. And the idea there is just to get it in real time. But, you know, with BitCloud, people have just, you know, discovered me as someone that just pumps out content, makes people feel bullish about the ecosystem, talks about crypto, talks about some of my investments and experiences. And I realized that people actually see a monetary value in me and the information that I'm providing them. Whereas on Twitter, everything is pretty much free. And what's the benefit for me to do this on Twitter? Because I'm competing with a whole bunch of other people doing the same thing as me, not getting paid for it. And Twitter has complete control over my profile. They could censor anything that I post. They could hide content. They could give put advertisements of my competitors on my page. If let's just say I had a competitor putting out the same content because they're spending a whole bunch of money or they want to promote that person over me. So there's a lot of roadblocks that people don't actually realize when they take a step back. And I think educating people on why this is so important today is super, even more important than just saying, hey, come on bitcloud.com, start monetizing with social tokens. Uh, This is a process and it's not just a matter of like, you know, figuring out what's BitCloud content, what's Twitter content, what's Instagram content. It's actually a matter of how do I be the first person or one of the first uh, people to actually go out and have a social token strategy. How do I build a brand for myself where people see monetary value in me? I see monetary monetary value in my fans. Oh, and by the way, I have the ability to do whatever I want to with the market that's following me and cater to everyone's needs. Um, so maybe that's like an Instagram for BitCloud clone. Maybe it's a, a TikTok for BitCloud clone. Maybe it's just a clubhouse. But the idea that all of your followers live together within your ecosystem with, under the BitCloud umbrella is really the most important part. The biggest issue today with BitCloud is nobody wants to start from scratch. Nobody wants to start from zero. And that is something that like TikTok had rapid success in was, and I think a lot of it really had to do with COVID too, even with Clubhouse was they just had exponential growth, right? And they don't, and once they start building out their following, it's like, well, what now? And then when the next platform comes about, they're starting from zero again and starting from zero again. But the idea is that everybody lives under this one ecosystem where you could bring your fans from one place to another without actually having to start from scratch and build new business models um, and not understand the rules on one platform versus another. And so I think it just creates all these new opportunities for people in the way where they can control it. And I think that's super important. The manipulated algorithms have been proven. Um, You're seeing it today with Twitter ads and Instagram ads. The idea that, again, someone could just have the ability, not just to turn your profile off, but just to like not expose your profile to the accounts that it's supposed to um, is super alarming. And the idea too, where if you're paying for an ad, you actually don't know if your analytics are real. 
they could be fake numbers. Um, and the reason is, again, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, their main priority is to make money. Their main priority is to put out the talent and content that people want to see that will then bring them more money. Uh, so that's kind of like my two cents on, I know it was pretty long and I kind of ranted there, but that's just kind of my thought on the social token ecosystem, like in a general perspective. Yeah, no, that was great. And, uh, and we love rants on, on this show for sure. <laughs> uh, I, I'm capable of them myself, even though I'm supposed to be the interviewer here. But uh, I think that one thing we could do that might be helpful for those who are, are listening, who are uh, not as familiar with BitCloud, I've talked about it more than a few episodes on the show thus far. Um, but not everyone listens to every episode. So I think it would be really helpful to hear from your perspective, you know, you, you've touched on different elements of BitCloud and, and why it's exciting as sort of the first, um, or, or, you know, at least uh, uh, one of the applications or, or one of the protocols that's enabling this social tokens element that, that people like you and I are very excited about. Um, can you just sort of introduce BitClout from, you know, maybe what made it so interesting originally from your perspective, uh, how that has sort of changed as you've gotten familiar with the platform and become one of the key influencers on it? Just your general introduction to BitClout for for people who aren't as intimately familiar as you and I. Yeah. So I would say like a lot of people will say it's like a decentralized Twitter, right? But decentralization actually means a lot of different things. And Twitter means a lot of different things to certain people, right? Um, Twitter is, is a company that has full control. So the de uh, if you wanted to talk about decentralization as in a control less Twitter, then yes, that's what it is. But there's a lot more to it. Big cloud is not just a decentralized Twitter. It's more of a way where anybody who signs up has an actual value to their name. So maybe on Instagram, it's the amount of followers you have. Uh, maybe on Facebook, it's just people will identify it as likes. But on BitCloud, it's based off of your coin price. And as there's more buy demand, the price will go up. As there's more sell demand, the price will obviously go down. And so now what you're able to do is buy into people and invest in people, invest in creators and invest in talent. Yeah. So I think what I'm hearing from you is that one of the main attractions about BitCloud is if you get started on BitCloud today, uh, it's actually a protocol rather than like one individual platform. And when you create an account, that's an account that could theoretically be used to sort of log you in and, and activate your profile on something that looks like a decentralized Twitter, which is sort of like what BitCloud.com looks like today. Um, but it might also sort of uh, enable you to get active on something that looks a lot different. Maybe it's like a decentralized YouTube or a decentralized TikTok. Um, and there's all sorts of, I guess, social media type applications social networking type applications that can spring up using like the BitClout identity and the BitClout uh, creator coins that people get when they create their identity, when they create their account. And it's a bit hard to explain conceptually because it's like, you know, we just don't have anything like this yet. I guess maybe one of the closest parallels would be in the, in the old world, in the, in the, in the centralized world, you know, you can log in using like Facebook or Google on all these different apps. And like, maybe if you log in with Facebook, like you'll have all of your friends imported there, but there's a whole nother animal here where, um, you know, you're not just getting your friends, you're actually getting like this collection of people who hold your creator coin. And then separately from all of that, there's uh, BitCloud itself, which is like, you know, the currency of BitCloud, like C-L-O-U-T. Uh, which sort of aligns everyone who's who's using this protocol and, and the various platforms that are being built on top of it. So it's like a pretty heady concept and uh, definitely difficult to explain, but hopefully people have a decent idea of, of some of the elements at play here, just based on what we've been bouncing back and forth. Feel free to comment further there if there's anything that you think I'm missing or, or have wrong a little bit. I love to be corrected certainly and i'm yeah. still getting to understand things yeah so bitcloud i would say like the main thing is that bitcloud's not a company and bitcloud.com is not necessarily the bitcloud protocol that we envision it's just kind of like the original proof of concept 
like the base layer stage. And then eventually, maybe in a few years from now, bitcloud.com, when you go to it, it's going to disappear. It won't exist. So the idea of it is to incentivize people to build on the, the BitCloud network. And by doing that, you're 100% correct. It's like using BitCloud identity. It's like the one API that connects to all of your apps. So like today, if I were to download a new app, it would say, oh, do you want to import your contacts, right? Well, it's just taking it from your, let's just say contacts ecosystem within your phone, with your phone numbers, or with Facebook, it takes your Facebook friends. But when you go onto, let's say Clubhouse or uh, just, let's just say a random app like Public, which is a uh, social media stock trading app, you're not necessarily, you're only able to bring over the people that have signed up for that app. Uh, or you could send them an invite message, right? So you're still like, it's more for their benefit to get new users on than your benefit, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And what this does is it allows everybody to, it, it's under one umbrella. And I think that that's the big thing that we're, we're all trying to learn here is that imagine you hold an umbrella and you have your Instagram for BitCloud, your Twitter for BitCloud, your TikTok for BitCloud, maybe you have your Shopify for BitCloud and you're holding that umbrella and you're taking everything from those platforms that you're using and you're holding it in one hand. Whereas everybody has a different Shopify account, a Facebook account, a YouTube account, a Twitter account, and all of the rules stay the same with the one umbrella. You're not, it's like a different set of terms and conditions for each one, but, on a decentralized protocol like BitCloud, uh, the idea again is so that the you can utilize all of the features that are being built on it and you are able to obviously choose what you wanna do because maybe if I'm a singer, I'm not gonna be like, uh, you know, doing a, 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 like tweeting as much. I might be performing on apps such as like After Party or uh, Clubhouse right. and, and performing shows and monetizing that way. Um, but the idea is that if you did want to like, then jump into like the Twitter game, all of your fans would then carry over. You don't have to start fresh. And then you have a new method of communication and a new method of monetization. And also my favorite part is you have the ability to like display different personalities. A lot of people today feel like they don't want to come on BitCloud because there's brand risk or they don't know what to post, or maybe the audience you know, does, is not necessarily theirs. Like if you're a singer, maybe of like Justin Bieber, let's say, you know, there's no diehard Justin Bieber fans on BitCloud, but there's just a bunch of crypto nerds. And so the way that I like to look at it is, well, take a look at the marketplace there, take a look at the market and then the marketplace on Instagram. It completely suits you for different purposes, but you, Justin Bieber could maybe be the user and not necessarily the performer. And the idea is maybe you could seek talent. Maybe you could get content. Uh, maybe you could invest in other talent, right? And give diamonds and interact with your fans that way and also allow your fans to make money alongside with you. And I think that that's like the missing piece here is normally when you're buying into somebody, it's like they're getting a majority of everything, most likely a hundred percent if I'm like donating to their Patreon. Mm -hmm. But with BitCloud, it's like the other way around. Like they're getting 10% with the founder award and that other 90% is yours for your upside. So if they succeed, they're getting 10% of your investment essentially for free. Uh, let's say it's $2,000, $200 goes immediately into the BitCloud, into their BitCloud wallet. And that $200 is in a BitCloud token. So today with a hundred layer there with at a hundred dollar price, that's $2. I mean, sorry, that's two BitCloud. Mm -hmm. and, but on my end, now I own $1,800 worth of their creator coin. And as they start to succeed and BitCloud succeeds, right? So the BitCloud price goes up, their creator coin price goes up because the underlying asset value, the underlying value is the BitCloud token, right? That is what is driving the price of these creator coins is imagine you're holding a shopping bag with... Justin Bieber's name on it. And every time someone bought in, it was they were putting one BitCloud into the shopping bag. And as that BitCloud went up in value, that bag also went up in value, right? So it's not like you're, you're just putting Bitcoin into or Ether or Solana into these creators. It's just the one BitCloud 
token and everything runs around it. And that's why it's super powerful, uh, not only these creator coins, but the tokens itself, because there's monetization opportunities all around it, even if it's just being able to give a diamond. So if let's just say there's a new song that comes out by Justin Bieber, and I, I know I'm using Justin Bieber a lot as an example here, but the idea is instead of giving him a like, why don't I give him a penny or a dollar or 10 cents? And as BitCloud grows, that 10 cents, if it goes 2x, then turns into 20 cents. But let's just say there's 100 million users, 200 million users, 500 million users. The numbers are insane and astronomical to what they're bringing in on other platforms. And so all of this, what this really takes is a few things. One, obviously user adoption, but a lot of education. And people will say, oh, well, it's just too complicated. Well, if you look at how the crypto space has evolved from 2017 until now, what I would say is a lot of people made a lot of money. And when people make money, they learn pretty quickly. And so this ecosystem is going to prove to like mid-level or small or, or, or lower level creators where, you know, having 100,000 Instagram followers doesn't actually make them a decent living. But the idea where they could sell access through one network and also be able to post and get new followers and transact in always, shape, always shapes or forms is going to be the new way of monetizing. And that's kind of like where I see this ending up, which is once people start making significant amounts of money, it's going to be really easy to learn. And obviously we're still in that, I call it pre-beginning phase where it's still super early and there was a lot of hype in the beginning, but now this is the time where you could educate and not try and like be aggressive and trying to get people to adopt to the platform, but educate on what this means and how they could be a leader kind of in their space, kind of like how Ashton Kutcher was one of like the very first on Twitter and took that brand risk, right? And I don't like, I, I, I think that that's kind of really where there's a lot of confusion with the cloud is like, oh, well, nobody's using it. But when you take a step back and you look at it, it's been around for 136 days, I think. There's a plethora of people who have um, claim their account, which also means that they've had BitCloud exp explain to them and they actually seek interest in what it does. May they don't have to have content ready to go, you know, when this platform just kind of came out abruptly in their face. And like, it's not like they planned for a decentralized crypto social media network to just like randomly appear one day and have a bunch of content. It's actually a process. And that's kind of like where we are. It's a growing pain, but it's really more of an educational phase. And because there are so many celebrities that have come on this and influential people, that's actually really the upside here is that it, they're attracted to this. They understand a little bit about what's going on, maybe not a lot, but they're open to understanding and learning more about it. And maybe as the space evolves over time, they'll slowly start to dip their feet in the water again. But, you know, when you think big picture, again, there's, a, there's over 100 apps being built on BitCloud today, 130 days later, versus something like Solana that has like a couple hundred in only 18 months. So it's just a completely different environment. And you, you're just taking a completely different approach to any other crypto project. And that's why I think like the crypto community is a little bit like skeptical of this is because this is not an ordinary protocol that they've seen in the past. Yeah, I think that's a great, great sort of tangent. Um, and it's definitely not, you know, there's a variety of ways in which it's just not what people in the crypto space even are familiar with seeing like they've seen uh, decentralized finance come and be sort of a big thing post, you know, first there was Bitcoin, then there was Ethereum. Uh, there's been a lot of other coins along the way. Then there was decentralized finance, which people just got really excited about. And it's, it's continuing to grow and get hot even over the last year, tons of momentum. Uh, NFTs sort of brought crypto mainstream for a lot of people, again, in, in the last year or several months or so. Um, but this is something that's like inherently social and it's just not, it's just in a bit of a different league versus uh, the different protocols that have been created to date. And uh, people don't really know what to make of it yet for good reason. You, you mentioned it's been only a hundred days or so. Um, and, you know, there's not a ton of users, but 
it's not, you know, it's more than a few. And, uh, and to your point, a lot of notable people have come on and claimed their profiles. I think it's a very common position to be in right now in regards to BitClout where um, sometimes people need to hear about something a few times or be convinced about something in a few different ways. And even with Bitcoin, you hear the stories of people who were sort of introduced to it in maybe 2013 and, oh, it was like too hard to buy and, and blah, blah, blah. Um, I personally remember I, I did sort of like a presentation in school on Bitcoin in 2015 or 2016 or something, uh, like literally did a presentation on it and didn't even occur to me to like go and actually try to buy some, uh, you know, kicking myself a little bit a couple of years after that. Mm -hmm. And so this time around, you know, seeing BitCloud and realizing, hey, this is something where, you know, to your point, yeah, there's platform risk. Like you get on something early and it doesn't develop in anything. It's like, oh, what was I doing? I was just sort of wasting my time. But the difference with BitCloud is there's, there's this reward where um, it's not just like, you know, Ashton Kutcher joining Twitter early where uh, he can be like, oh, look, I joined in 2000, whatever. And, um, you know, I guess he, he probably reaps some rewards in terms of like followers from just being an early popular profile on Twitter and everything like that. But on BitCloud, it's not just like followers and like bragging rights for how early you were. Rather, it's, you know, if you if you sort of get yourself on, on BitCloud early and start to benefit from some of like the network effects, how they work in, in every other social media, um, you know, and every other social network, on BitCloud, there's money attached to everything. And to your point, when, when money's attached and people are making money, um, people learn quickly. Uh, it's just, and they listen. Yeah, and, and they listen and they pay attention. So... I think there's a lot of people waiting on the sidelines who have heard of BitClout. They're intrigued by BitClout, but there's sort of this natural uh, dynamic where if, if you're already, you know, rich and famous, or, or even if you're just like a pretty successful influencer on one of these other platforms, um, there's a little bit of a disincentive to take that risk. Like just naturally, the more successful you are, I think the less open to risk you are. You, you don't see people who you know, you don't see like an NFL quarterback off and going and trying to start a career in the NBA. Uh, you just sort of keep doing what, what you're great at and, and for good reason too. Um, but I think once people see the first few uh, really successful traditional influencers and, and creators on BitCloud, it, it could be a flood that, that comes in the future. And, ha you know, it, it could totally not work too. But I think BitCloud at the very least shows a model that uh, is something that even if it's not BitCloud, there's going to be something that, that looks like a decentralized social network that's going to be really interesting in years ahead and, and hopefully can take some, uh, you know, people's time and attention away from some of these, like you mentioned, you know, centralized and, and generally pretty censored uh, social networks where, you know, it, it's never been more prevalent than over the last year and never been more evident than the last year where you know, the president get banned from all these social networks um, and, and all sorts of people. So, um, it's, it's going to be interesting. And it's certainly interesting that, that you're one of the earlier guys on there and, and doing a great job. Maybe, uh, you could share a little yeah. bit with, with listeners who, who maybe this is the conversation that convinces them to go and, and spend a little time and, and check out BitClout. Um, how you sort of got started, what your, uh, like social token strategy has been and, uh, you know, how you've sort of viewed your role as one of the early creators on the platform. Yeah, so for sure. So actually, one thing I also want to add to that too is that what BitCloud's going to do differently than everybody else is it's going to pay out coin holders. So there's opportunities for like, let's just say you're buying an NFT of somebody, you could split dividends out to your coin holders. So I just wanted to add that one point, where which is now it's like com community earning and earning together. And so now there's multiple reasons to owning somebody's creator coin. Um, so, so I just wanted to add that point because I thought that that was really like an interesting uh, way that you described it and really well thought out. Yeah, it's, um, that's super interesting. It's like owning, you know, instead of owning shares that pay dividends in a company, you're, you're owning shares that pay dividends in a person. And that's, you know, maybe not and, technically and correct, but yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's very yeah, and interesting. And the content that they've put out that you've bought into, right? So maybe you're buying an NFT of somebody's brand new song and like now, okay, you own that song, but oh, by the way, all of the coin holders from that person that you bought the song off of are also going to benefit from your purchase. So the higher the purchase price, the more dividends you'll receive. So mm -hmm. I think it's just like this new 
uh, payment mechanism and distribution mechanism that we're going to start to see evolve through uh, social tokens. Um, yeah, sorry for like kind of going off. I know you asked kind of like about my story about like what my strategy is and mm. kind of like how I've kind of taken this approach. So when I first got on BitCloud, I invested in it before it launched and I had a, just a bunch of tokens that I wanted to deploy into creator coins when the site opened up. And I remember March 12, 12 o'clock when the site opened up, I'll never forget that day. And there's just so many problems getting into the site because there's so much traffic, people, everybody wanted to get on. And I was trying to like, I couldn't understand what the site would look like, right? So I read the white paper and that's pretty much all I had. And then just kind of like talking to a bunch of people that knew the team. Um, it was a really interesting opportunity. I didn't understand it more like of the creator coins until I actually got on at 12 o'clock and saw the site. And immediately Elon Musk, Naval, Chamath, Katy Perry. I mean, it was the like early days of all these people in the top 10. Uh, the Winklevoss brothers were in there. So it was like a really different crew to what it is today. But that was really like the moment where I realized, oh, this is interesting, but this is also weird because I don't like, are they on the platform? Are we just buying into their name? Like, what are we buying into their name for? Like claiming accounts was never something that like I understood in like from a deeper perspective, I understood that mm -hmm. they would have to come on, but I didn't really understand like how Twitter was involved and how, you know, they would have to take part in posting content. And so the strategy there was like, oh, let's just buy like influential people that the crypto community loves. So anywhere along the lines of like Elon Musk, Jordan Belfort, the Winklevoss brothers, Dave Portnoy, who's a content machine, but has lots of finance. Same thing with Jordan Belfort. Um, I, maybe I just said his name, but the whole idea was that like, I just wanted to kind of buy some creator coins and understand that experience. And so I did that. And then I would say probably about like 30 days after the launch, mid-April, we started to see the shift where we had, people were coming on and claiming their accounts. Um, and these were people like Steve Aoki, Blau. Um, we saw Snoop Dogg tweet about it. He never claimed his account. But then just, you know, the idea was that once someone claimed their account, the price would skyrocket. And then I realized this was like mostly speculation until someone came on and used it successfully. And that's when like Craig and Jake, Craig Clemens and Jake Udell started actually doing something different, which was providing value to the community by organizing different things. Jake was more of like, just like everybody's best friend on the platform, which was fun because he was like on the discord on clubhouse every every monday uh doing cloud hour interviewing different people and mm. craig was putting together these like very exclusive zoom calls with influential people he had diamond hands michael arrington neil strauss um just a whole bunch of interesting people that even jordan belfort who came on and shared their perspective um and they started to they, they changed the way that i thought about this platform it was that we weren't going to see large names in the short term come on and like have the highest coin price we were going to see people who are providing significant value in return and people that were pumping out con like content was one thing but exclusivity was another and so the reason why you know i was buying into certain people's coins like benny blanco for like a lot of them was because oh he was doing top 10 zoom calls and then like look i established this relationship with benny blanco or same thing with logan paul right and then you can figure out ways to get creative off of that to then help the big cloud ecosystem. And so that kind of like was the early strategy. And then now seeing how it's kind of evolved, I was like, okay, well, everybody's calling me about big cloud. Let me just start giving out facts, little key pieces of information, little clouds, 280 characters, um, little threads about why things are a certain way, uh, how creators can make money, some of the flaws, and even just, little sayings like why decentralization is so important or why censorship is not just Twitter taking down a post on COVID vaccines. Censorship is also manipulating algorithms so that they, the primary source, which would be Instagram or Twitter, has the actual control on how they plan to utilize your content. Um, and so kind of like just pulling out the message that way. And then, so now I'm at like this point where I've had a lot of people that 
the purchased into my coin, but then I also like own a bunch of my own and people are like still asking me like, Hey, come on my podcast or Hey, um, um, maybe you could take a look at building my company. And what it's done is it's brought me some really cool deal, deal flow. And, um, it's something interesting because I'm not a Twitter guy. I'm not an Instagram guy, but I am a big cloud guy and I'm a big cloud guy because I actually see value in having an account. Whereas on Twitter, I see a completely different value where I'm just following it for news. I'm not following it to interact with people. I'm not following it for deal flow. And that's a completely different strategy than on BitCloud. Um, but for me, I'm super bullish more on the idea that creators can make more money than these apps themselves. And that's really what I'm looking for as an angel investor in, the, in this ecosystem is I don't really care, believe it or not, as much about the application making money as much as I do is how easy and simple it is for the creators to make money. Um, I truly believe that when you start telling people how they can make money and what the product that you're providing them, how it helps benefit them and will help them succeed and proving that model to them multiple times with different um, scenarios and opportunities, that's actually going to be more successful for the broader version of the ecosystem than just telling them, Hey, telling them, Hey, come on the cloud today. You can make a bunch of money. I'll buy a bunch of your coin. And then like you figure out how to push out content. Yeah. I think a lot of people are coming on for, for a lot of different reasons. And uh, you know, to your point, it's, it's extremely early days and and you've been there since day one, doing a great job of uh, you know, explaining it to people and, and using this, time right now where there's not like this huge rush and we're in a little bit of a little bit of a trough of sort of it feels like at least in terms of the price of cloud and everything like that uh guys like you and and jake are really keeping the community positive and uh taking a long-term view i I think it's been great so um you know appreciate you coming on again i know we're coming up on time um but i think the the most appropriate way to end would be to share uh where people can go follow you on, on bitcloud and, uh, you know, any parting words you might have, feel free to share. But uh, thanks again, Reed, for, for taking the time. It's been awesome talking with you and look forward to talking more in the future. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, so I'm Reed on BitCloud at R-E-A-D-E. Um, I'm anti-social media, so only BitCloud. Uh, but if there's anything, you know, that I would like to, you know, kind of my final words would be, this is not a project that you look at in three months and be like, what's the big cloud price going to be in three months? Uh, it, it's not actually just about the big cloud price. It, it has a lot to do with the broader um, way that socializing has been monetized the last 10 years. And it's a process and it's not going to be tied to just the token price. It's going to be tied to developers who can build on this. It's going to be tied to creators who have platforms to successfully monetize and understand how they can best use the information that is given to them and the information that is decentralized. So maybe that's analytics, uh, maybe that's money that they've received, uh, and maybe it's just content, right? That's just fairly displayed and fairly distributing, distribute, distributed amongst the people. And it's a step-by-step. So if there's anything, I would not look at the big cloud price as the tool is as the tool to making this a successful investment. It's the entire ecosystem. And so anybody that's looking to get on big cloud before you make an account, my suggestion is to play around with it, learn about it, and then figure out how you can utilize social tokens in the future. And remember that it's not only bitcloud.com. Bitcloud.com was meant for people to build on. And that's the most important thing for people to remember is that in the future, there'll be a plethora of opportunities in all in all different uh, rings of spectrum that you're able to connect with your audience and have a fair way of communicating with one another and of just a fair monetization system.